Exposure testing is one of the most useful things that we can do to get to know a camera better. Newsshooter and the ACS Technical Committee both use a process for exposure testing digital cameras that I started developing by doing exposure testing of new film stocks with Kodak and the ACS in the late 90s. Since then, I've found this methodology to be the most accurate way of doing camera testing. In the digital world, one of the biggest challenges is to control the massive number of variables in order to get meaningful results about the camera itself rather than subjective information about the rest of the workflow. To achieve this, the essential elements are a controlled lighting setup, a standard 18% grey card, and an actual human face. Sequences of overexposure and underexposure are recorded in one, half, or third stop increments, beyond the limits of what we expect to be the camera's usable dynamic range. This is very different to looking for a number to define the camera's total dynamic range, which is great for marketing, but actually tells us almost nothing about how the camera responds to light through that dynamic range. The grey card gives us a consistent reference to correct the exposures, and this can be done using the printer light controls in DaVinci Resolve. It's also essential that this is processed before the LUT is applied. In these tests, we used the manufacturer's LUTs and applied them to the second node in the tree. Applying the LUT to the whole timeline or as an output LUT also works fine. Using the printer lights, also known as the offset controls, it's possible to match the exposure to a still taken from the normal exposure by matching the brightness of the grey card on the scopes. This removes subjectivity from the correction process and also allows us to see what else is happening to the image in different parts of the exposure range, such as changes to contrast or colour. Then we can see the shot in both its uncorrected and corrected states, and this is where we get really useful information about how we can work with this particular camera. So with the Alexa Mini LF, we can see that at five stops over and two stops under, we're still getting a corrected image that's very usable. But beyond that, there are real challenges with trying to get a normal looking skin tone. This seven stop range is what we call the camera's usable exposure latitude, as opposed to the 14 or 15 stops of total dynamic range. This latitude tells us how much flexibility we have with the exposures, but also what the different characteristics of our image are at different exposure levels. For example, I quite like the look of the Sony FX9 at one stop overexposed, and I could then build this correction into a custom LUT to make that the correct normal exposure for a particular project. The uncorrected image also gives us a wealth of knowledge about the camera, as well as being a comparison for the corrected image. Because good lighting usually uses both under and overexposure of certain areas of a scene for dramatic effect, seeing how different exposures are rendered with just the LUT applied tells us exactly how it will look if we light things at these levels. So for example, if we want a character to walk through a pool of light, we know that if that pool of light is two stops overexposed, then it will look like this. Similarly, if we have someone lurking in the shadows of a scene and we light them to be two stops under, it will look like this. By familiarising ourselves with what the images from a camera look like at the different exposure levels, we can predict and control how our images will look to a very high level of precision and consistency, while also working faster and more decisively.